Hey, so I just got back from Oticon, and I have to say that it was quite an experience. I met up with a cool bunch of people that I managed to bump shoulders with and have a good time with, but the problem is um, Oticon, as far as a convention goes, is kind of on its last legs in my eyes. Like, it's not quite what it used to be. Okay, so maybe calling it a convention that's on its last legs is a little bit extreme, but at the same time, it is quite... Definitely not what it used to be. For instance, I'm a long-time convention goer. I went to Otakon, um, you know, for several years now. And I've gotten to see it at its peak and at its, like, low point. And this is definitely one of the low points. It is least in decline. And I would blame the increasingly commercialized corporatist strategy that it's employing to... Um, try to derive large amounts of revenue and profit. But at the same time, um, there's been a growing disinterest in people just recognizing that Otakon isn't quite what it used to be. You know, it's sort of like that convention that sort of lost its spirit along the way and it sold out its soul in a bid to try to, you know, make an extra buck or two along, you know, up till now. And my problem with that is that there's not a whole lot bringing me back to Otakon if that's the case. Um, other than perhaps a vestigial interest in anime, but also because of the nostalgia that kept me going in the first place. Um, you have to bear in mind, Otakon is not just for people to go to cosplay or attend panels to. It's also a sort of networking thing for some friends that I know. Because you have a chance and opportunity to meet a lot of people in the um, industry, you know, and sort of inspire you to make your own content or do things that you want to do. For instance, make a manga or an anime, or at least pitch the idea for that sort of thing. And Otakon's forgotten about its roots as a nonprofit and instead geared itself towards a very commercialized strategy. For instance, they wouldn't do things that other conventions will do. They won't like sort of lend credence to people that have issues. For instance, uh, I had a friend that had um, accidentally put in a mailing address incorrectly into, um, you know, when they wanted to get their badge shipped to their house. Because, you know, staying in line and having to attend, like, you know, the convention on a Thursday to just to pick up your badge, it's, you know, taking, you know, it's just very needlessly, like, inconvenient, you know? So some people want to get their badges shipped to their house so they can just show up to the convention. Go to the convention. Do what they got to do. Excuse me. Um, the issue with her is the fact that, um, you know, and I can definitely see it both ways. I understand that Otakon has a interest in mitigating people getting something for nothing because, you know, in their eyes, I'm sure that they're imagining, well, you know, it's, you know, your responsibility to enter in your address correctly and, you know, we just sent out a badge and we don't care which address it gets to. The fact is now we have you know, a badge that's already out there. If we send you a badge that's, you know, we're losing $100, basically. I would retort with the fact that I know for damn well that those badges are not worth their weight in gold like that. And I understand that, like, gaining entrance to the uh, convention enables you to go to a lot of places that you otherwise wouldn't be able to go to be able to prop up and support the venues. But at the same time, um, not even a sense of remorse or, like, expression of empathy to her plight. And I'm also biased because I know her. Um, but at the same time, it's sort of just some, one of the many stories I keep hearing about the convention at large that has sort of lost its sense of compassion and has traded that for the soulless corporate entity that it's become. And with that, I have to say that the benefits to um, moving down to Washington, D.C. and becoming... It's already been corporate, like a corporate entity for several years now, but it's sort of become more pronounced ever since it's moved down to Washington, D.C. I will say that the venues are looking a lot better. I mean, there was even an area down in the uh, the theater's room that looked amazing. It was Dragon Ball Z, but it basically took the... Uh, it basically took the tournament area, had like a walled structure around it, made it look like the tournament... Um, you know, area that was featured in Dragon Ball and had the dragon that's featured throughout the series, the long dragon that's, you know, grants you wishes with the Dragon Balls, you know, up above the uh, venue and it looked pretty cool. 
Also, a lot of flat screen TVs showing anime as you walk through the halls, and a lot of um, really spectacular setups like the car show in the back. And there were a bunch of anime weeb waifu cars, but there was also one particular like hippie van that looked like it was something right out of Fallout. Basically, somebody dolled their uh, car, their van to look like something like a like a Fallout themed care van, which is pretty cool, you know. Here's my problem though. Um, so it's harping a lot on making revenue without actually delivering the content that we're actually interested in. And while as much as I like walking around the dealer's room to see what's available, I don't like the fact that a lot of the merch happens to look the same after the while. And at the same time, it's just not, it's not like it used to be where every sort of venue that managed to get in there had something different to sell. It was like... A lot of the merch that you could otherwise buy anywhere else was offered here, and you didn't have those, like, you know, singular mom-and-pop or very unique, like, you know, merchants selling things that were very unique. Also, the Elders Room, both days, Friday and Saturday, opened early. Actually, it opened, it, uh, not opened early, it closed early. And, um, I have to say, it's weird how the Artist Alley opened so late, and they pay a fraction of the price compared to the people in the dealer's room. That was just a, like an issue that one of my friends raised, and it was you know a legitimate grievance, but I can sort of lend more uh, sympathy towards the artists, especially coming from the furry fandom. I have to say, as far as conventions go, I am a little bit biased as well. I typically prefer furry conventions over anime conventions these days because I feel more a more sense of cohesion with the community than I do with, like, you know, fellow weebs. And I don't mind rubbing shoulders with a lot of the people that show up for these conventions, but, you know, there's definitely been something lost in translation ever since that Otakon moved from Baltimore down to Washington, D.C. Me, personally, I used to live 30 minutes away from Baltimore, so I could pretty much just commute every day if I wanted to. And I typically never, like, got a hotel room there because that would just be a waste of money, you know? I'd rather go through the hustle and bustle of trying to get a parking place in the city because in Baltimore, it was actually doable. And some of the locales in Baltimore were kind of dickish, but, you know, by and large, I never really saw that much of a big deal or that much of a negative, uh, you know, event. But, you know, with the rising crime rates and stuff like that, as well as the constraints that the dealer, not the dealer's room, that the convention center as a whole um, presented as far as like the growing population of Otakon. I can understand why they left, especially given the fact that in some cases, just to get your pre-reg badge, you had to line up around the building seven times. Seven times. That's just one continuous line, looped around seven times. So, yeah, a change was needed. The move to Baltimore definitely weeded out some of the trashier people. All due respect, if you happen to be in that category, I'm not picking any names, I am not picking any... Groups, I am just saying, based on what I've seen, if you're the kind of guy or girl that makes a scene in the hallway and makes everybody feel embarrassed or otherwise uh, cringeworthy and awkward, then maybe you're the problem here, okay? I'm just saying. But it's definitely impacted the ability for most people to attend the convention, which might explain why the population has decreased so much. Because there will be moments where I'm just recording video just to showcase how few people are actually at the convention itself. And, you know, you can say, too, Joe, you know, like, all these people that, like, these streets, these empty streets, these sidewalks that you're showing me. Um, if that was Baltimore, they would be packed. Here in D.C., they are not packed. They were desolate and empty, apart from, you know, a few lingers here and there. The convention center is definitely an improvement over the uh, convention center in Baltimore. However, I would have to say that the it's just not the same. And that's an obvious quibble to make, but it's not the same in the volume of people that would come. It's not the same in the type of people that are coming. And it's also not the same in how long they stay, because everything seems to close a lot earlier than it used to. That might just be because of DC. It might be because of the commercial corporatist strategy of Otakon. But it definitely had a noticeable impact on my overall con experience. Um, everything looked good. Everything looked very shiny, very presentable, very squeaky clean. But at the same time, I couldn't ignore the fact that there was just a very... 
there was a very like lack of tact and tender loving care between the staff members and the staff members of the respective convention center as well as the Marriott Hotel um, in terms of their guests. Like, I feel like they could have treated us a lot better, um, kind of like they did at the Baltimore Convention Center. And that, you know, by and large, when we're having fun and we're not hurting anybody, you don't need to yell at us to stop what we're doing or to, like, leave an area or anything like that. We can just be, you know, well, like, you know, you don't have to, like, yell at us to do that. We can just be asked, like, hey, you're kind of creating a disturbance here. Can you, you know, go? There's a certain, like, con etiquette, but... That con etiquette gets thrown out the window when most people are enjoying the fun, you know? Of course, you're going to have that bitter sad sack in the corner that can't have fun to save their day and, like, you know, say, like, you know, save their life, you know, if, it, if their life depended on it. I don't even know what I was saying. They can't even have fun if their life depended on it. But, like, at the, by and large, I've seen it at cons. Yeah, it gets a little annoying after a while, but if everyone's having fun, hey, just let it ride, man. Why you got to be the one to crash the fun? If it's creating a health hazard, that's one thing, but if it's not hurting anybody. Anyway, so, yeah. The corporate strategy has definitely lend itself to not as enjoyable of a con experience. To the point that the two panels that I went to were about the only two panels I, you know, attended. Because a lot of the panels just seemed to just cancel and up and quit. Which I would say is definitely an issue for the person running the panel. But at the same time... It's like, it begs the question why that happened. And if uh, it was because of administrative bullshit, then that's shame on Otakon. Otherwise, shame on the person that was running the panel. I went to Mel Gear Solid. Like, there was a Mel Gear panel talking about Mel Gear and Hideo Kojima's contributions to the game series as a whole. And then, I watched the worst freaking hentai from the 80s and 90s I've ever seen after learning a brief history lesson of what the history of hentai was, not getting into that. Um, yeah, when hentai goes bad. Those are the only two panels I watched, both 18+. plus. Anyway, um, it wasn't enough to keep me, like, compelled. Mostly, I just remember recording footage, taking pictures, and hanging out with my friends. Also getting very drunk, which I shouldn't have been getting drunk so early, but hey... Um, nothing was going on, and I caught myself, especially during the When a Hentai Goes Bad panel, starting to drink a little. Um, so yeah. How do I feel about Otakon? I think it's slowly in decline. And last year, supposedly, 24,000 people showed up. This year, I will be impressed if they make that, or 25,000, as they say they're projected to make, but I doubt it. I seriously do. It's not going to be like back in yesteryear where there were 35,000 people attending, and I understand that some people will be like, that's a lot. But when you compare that to like Dragon Con numbers, that's a drop in the bucket. Dragon Con brought at least 90,000 people, and I'd say it's one of the better cons to attend. Right now, locally, for me, I would say Katsukon beats Otakon by a long shot for the simple fact that the cosplayers that show up are much cuter and better and more presentable. Um, not to be elitist, but I'm just saying that they're, the effort that they go through to make themselves look good is definitely apparent in what they've done. And that Katsukon still has a sense of style and, like, flair, and it definitely is not afraid to flaunt that. Whereas Otakon has worried more about raising revenue than it's been about maintaining the careful balance between, you know, getting enough money to keep running and also keeping the interest of the community you know, at heart. Listen, I'm not saying that any convention should be run out of the goodness of its own heart, but you need to maintain a balance between making a profit if you're going to go down that route and also delivering to the community what they come to your convention to do. You know, you can't just... You can't just harp on the strategy, if I build it, they will come. That's half true. It will work, but the con has to be worth attending Otherwise, you're some cheap fucking hooker that's asking for money without doing anything. Or, you know, you're not even a hooker or a stripper at this point. You're just a fucking gold digger. You expect me to throw money at you for a subpar product. Get out of here. Anyway, not to be too extreme or vulgar with that sort of comparison, but it's definitely how I felt. And just getting to the damn place was struggle enough. I couldn't just mark, like, ride the mark train. 
I had to drive by car, try to find parking. Most parking places nearby wouldn't take, like, credit card. Only on weekdays. They were just like, oh, we only take cash on weekend. And I just wanted to be like, well, fuck you. Um, but that would be a dick move. So I, on Saturday, I actually ended up going to a parking meter and parking on the street and kept having to go back every two hours to refill the meter because in spite of the fact that the meter told me, hey... Um, no limit after these two hours, they lied to me. That's more of a DC issue than an Oticon issue, but it still factors into how my con experience as a whole could have been improved. But anyway, um, I'm going to give Oticon one more year, in spite of the fact that most of my friends are saying that they probably won't be showing up next year. I'm going to attribute these first two years as growing pains, but... If Oticon, I really hope that if you're watching this video right now, that you sort of evaluate where you are as a convention and what your goals and priorities are going forwards. Because if you're going to continue down the corporatist shill strategy, like, you know, line of things, then don't be surprised if you continue to lose attendance ship and if people just don't want to be a part of your con. And, you know, obviously maybe I'm being a little too harsh on Oticon as a whole, but... For somebody that's attended con like the convention year after year after year, only to see it like it is now on life support, that's like a kick to the balls, you know? Anyway, if this video sounds like it's rambly, it's because Face Rig took a massive shit and would not record my last video because it claimed that I did not have enough storage space when I clearly do. So if this video succeeds in saving, that'll be good. If it doesn't, I'm going to bash my head into the floor and go play Darkest Dungeons and then look at my gross grody self in the mirror for two hours. Nah, not really. Um, in all, I would have to say Oticon has definitely taken a more corporate strategy in how it runs things from an administrative and marketing-like perspective, and I feel like it could honestly stand to get some, gain some soul again, gain a sense of spirit, because Oticon, by and large, just feels like it's sold its soul for the promise of wealth and prosperity, and that's clearly not happened because not as many people are attending the convention as um, they projected or desired. So, hey, for all you staff members out there, I commend you for your responsibility in dealing with our bullshit, but at the same time, I feel like some of you could sort of stand to loosen up a little bit and gain a sense of humor, and also just be more compassionate to the community that you are a part of you know, the weeb community. But yeah, with that being said, I guess I'm just going to pour over the footage that I've recorded and make a video out of it. So, expect a Oticon 2018 video titled A Walkthrough Oticon 2018. Something like that. Same manner of video that I've been uploading. I still need to upload Biggest Little Fur Cons footage, which I have been putting off for several months now. Anyway... I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching. This is 2 Joe Panda signing off, and thank you for watching.